Seventeen years ago, 60 Minutes first examined the so-called French paradox, which suggested that the French, despite a high-fat diet and high consumption of wine, had a remarkably low incidence of heart disease compared with Americans. Most researchers agreed that there was something in the wine that offered protection. And a few years later, even the highly cautious federal dietary guidelines say that moderate consumption of red wine can be beneficial. Now scientists across the country have identified a substance in red wine called resveratrol that they believe might do more than just protect the heart, but could, in very high concentrations, significantly extend life by preventing a number of age-related illnesses. If they're right, we all may soon be taking a pill that could give us an extra decade or two of healthy old age. If the promise holds true, I think this has the chance to change health care. Dr. Christoph Westphal says we all may soon be taking a drug that just might beat the clock, a simple pill that could delay the inevitable. Our goal is to prevent and forestall many of the diseases that strike us as we reach 50, 60, and 70, all with one pill. What you're suggesting is that it's some kind of rejuvenation drug that turns a 70-year-old into a 35-year-old. That might be pretty hard to do, but I think if we're on a train heading one direction, we can slow down that train. I think we can slow down uh, these genes that control the aging process. That quest to put death on hold began in 2003 when Westfall met David Sinclair, a biochemist at Harvard, who was studying the genetic components of aging. Five years ago, I met David, and he had shown that you could extend lifespan in yeast. That's pretty exciting. If, now if you happen to be a yeast, it's very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> Yeasts are one thing, human beings are more complicated. So Sinclair focused on a gene present in almost all life forms, the sirtuin gene. It's normally inactive, but when it is active, Sinclair believes it triggers a survival mechanism that extends life. Convinced that something in nature could activate that gene, Sinclair randomly tested thousands of compounds. And bingo, he got a hit, resveratrol. When I googled this resveratrol, uh, I was shocked to find that red wine was the top hit. Red wine is brimming with resveratrol. Is found in high concentration in the skin of the grape and seems to play a role in protecting it from invading bacteria and fungi. Were you aware of, of the research into red wine that it offered certain health benefits? Oh sure, I mean that's why I almost fell off my chair when the link was made and I thought that this was a potential explanation for the benefits of red wine. The important news here is not that we found something in red wine, the important thing is that we passed a milestone where we can now make drugs based on this knowledge and potentially slow down aging itself. What we're talking about is activating the body's natural genetic defenses against diseases. And that's very powerful if we can harness that. Their organs looked pristine, youthful, fat-free, uh, and their physiology was just like they were dieting, but they were fat. Convinced they were on the right path, they fast-tracked the drug into human trials on people with untreated diabetes. And the results were impressive. It significantly lowered glucose and insulin levels without the patients changing their diet or taking any other drugs. Originally, our hope was that you'd be able to prevent diseases of aging. What we ended up seeing is actually you could therapeutically intervene in patients who have diseases of aging, and that was unexpected. Yeah, the diabetic patients have high blood sugar, and the molecules bring it down. That's treatment, that's not prevention. We're talking about is potentially making a 90-year-old as healthy as a 60-year-old. A 90-year-old 60 can play tennis and see their great-grandkids graduate from college. People will live active, healthy lives and then die quietly in their sleep. And that's really the aim here with these medicines. Are we on the edge of maintaining active lives into our hundreds, for example? Well, we've certainly passed a corner in terms of the science and someone's going to achieve it. And if it's not us, it's going to be someone else.